Welcome to St. Michael. We offer a special welcome to all visitors who are with us this evening and to those viewing the live stream. Printed worship aids are available at the entrances. Starting in April, we will be offering a Bible study titled The Holy Spirit and Spiritual Gifts. Sessions will be offered at a variety of days and times Please see the bulletin for more information and to register. Our prayer shawl ministry is in need of homemade prayer shawls that are given to those battling health issues. If you would like to donate a shawl, please see the bulletin for more information. Join us for the annual Good Friday prayer vigil at Planned Parenthood in St. Paul. Transportation will be provided by a generous donation from the Gina Foundation. Members of the Respect Life Ministry will be in the narthex after Mass for the bus sign-up and with more information. Please see the bulletin for the Holy Week schedule. Please note that there will not be reconciliation or 5 p.m. Mass next Saturday. The Easter Vigil will begin at 8 p.m. Easter Sunday Mass times will be 7.30, 9.15, and 11 a.m. There will not be a Sunday 5 p.m. on Easter Sunday Mass. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday. 
If you have dried palms from last year, they can be burned or crushed into particles and scattered in a garden. Our Mass today begins at the back of the church. I invite you to please stand and turn and face the baptismal font. We gather the prayers always in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say of his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and his life. I invite you please to hold your palms on high for blessing. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it, and he will send it back here at once. So they went off, and they found the colt tethered at the gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him as well as those following kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna! in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, brothers and sisters, let, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Let us sing number 425 in the Gather Hymnal, Hosanna. Number 425. <laughs>
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who is an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. I 
trusted in God, may God deliver me. Oh, deliver me as you love me. I long to stand in the midst of your people and sing your name. Give God your Lord, cry out your praises and hold fast. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not, require, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ, King of endless glory, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death and death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every other name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, King of endless Please be seated. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, 
for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. Ours were the griefs he bore, ours were the pains he carried, ours were the sins he took on him, and by his wounds we On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they had sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. As they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed, It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many, Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives.
Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have the, your face shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open, did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day by day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but as he left the cloth behind, and he ran off. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and he was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days 
I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy! And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then a cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, You would deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests and the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said in reply. You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask for him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have them release, him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with this man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Crucify him. Pilate said to them. Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. Soldiers led him away inside the palace that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting on him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of his purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. 
They pressed into service a passerby, Simon a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to a place of Golgotha, which is translated the place of the skull. They gave him wine to drink, mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With, with him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming off the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling for Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, placed it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave up a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Some among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James, and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of a rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb, Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ.
Today we come face to face with Holy Week. That central celebration of our faith, the prayers and the stories that shape our faith. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. This twofold celebration kind of sets us into the week. It draws us, it pushes us into this week we call holy. It's uh, as a preview of what is coming this week. We are invited to enter in to this week. We enter into the people, the places, and the events that we will hear about, the upper room, the washing of feet. This is my body, this is my blood, the garden, the cross, the tomb, the empty tomb, resurrection. We enter into a tension of life and faith. Just this day, we have the joy of Palm Sunday and we have the agony of the passion all in one day. And that points us right to how this week is going to be. We will have the uh, triumph, the tragedy. We will have exaltation and suffering. We will have love and betrayal. We will have reconciliation and death. We will have service. We will have the cross. But despite this tension, we know the ending. We know what the headlines will be on Easter Sunday morning. They are God wins, love wins, hope wins, life wins. The subheadline: death and sin don't have the last word. Eternal life has the last word. This is the mystery of our faith. This is the mystery that we enter into this week. This is the mystery of a very holy week. And we invite you to join us, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. And to do as Jesus told Peter and the two other disciples, watch and pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy made manifest in Jesus, we name our needs this day. For the church, that we may strive to have the same mind as Christ as we offer our lives in loving service to others, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our broken world, 
May the wars in the Holy Land and Ukraine cease. Suffering come to an end and peace be restored. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who experience bigotry, violence, or discrimination, that God will heal their spirits, protect them from harm, and that we may be a society that offers acceptance and support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing for the sacraments of baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation, that they may enter more deeply into the mystery of God's unconditional love through the celebrations of Holy Week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people everywhere, may despair and pain be lifted from every heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, victims of war and religious persecution, of murder and suicide, of accidents and natural disasters, and for those who have recently died, Rosemary Malarnik, mother of Mary Badov, Arthur Bachtel, father of Lisa Tice, John Liggett, and for Esther Hartman Wagner, for whom this Mass is offered. May all the faithful departed be welcomed into God's loving embrace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Again, you ask your prayers, especially for John Leggett, who went to be with the Lord. This morning, some of you may remember the story about a month ago, I was called to the hospital, St. Francis, on a Saturday morning, and we thought John was very close to death at that time, but as he uh, became more and more aware, he wanted me to take care of something. He and his wife, Janice, had been married for 60 years, and she said to him one day, they always sit right back here, so fam some of the family is back there. She said, could we sit in the front pew just one time and have Father Tom give us a blessing for our 60th wedding anniversary? And he initially said no. So there he is in the emergency room at St. Francis. He said, Father, you've got to take care of that. So a few weeks ago, with Janice here and John watching on TV, I gave him their 60th anniversary blessing. But they both talked about how much they had loved one another for all those years. Let's lift them, all of our beloved dead, in prayer. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, for the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us sing number 487 in the Black Book, Way of the Cross. Number 487 in the Black Book.
thorns he leads the way of the cross he carried the saving cross to the roads of the world through the alleys of poverty and misery Son of David, stripped of his glory, he leads the way of the cross. We carry the saving cross through the roads of the world, through the alleys of poverty and misery. Marching to a dawning day to freedom and victory to God's life and endless glory. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper had ended, was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread And drink this cup We 
proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. As the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter in my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As Deacon Terry has already invited us, I invite you to please enter fully into this week ahead. We have already been through the, the great joy of welcoming Jesus as he entered in triumph into Jerusalem to the sorrow of the first proclamation, the Passion. We will hear the Passion, according to St. John, read again on Friday. But each day throughout this week, especially Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday morning, each day has a different focus of that one and same Paschal mystery, and there's such richness in the liturgy. So, you know the deal. I'm always good to you. I always keep things moving, but just for this week, we put our watches away, no looking at your phones. We will take however long it takes. Um, in all seriousness, in your charity, also please lift up in prayer Ben King, who went to be with the Lord. His funeral services were on Friday. He died in an accidental drowning on vacation, only 51 years old. Um, powerful funeral liturgy yesterday at uh, St. Wenceslas, where their members long term, they more recently joined here, but his 18-year-old daughter and I believe 21-year-old son both gave very powerful eulogies. What everyone had to say is Ben did everything he did with compassion, or pa passion and compassion. His work, his work as a husband, his father, everything in life very open to the Lord. And as a reminder, we don't know how many days we're going to have on this earth, my friends. And every day is a day to listen to the Lord who might be calling you to something new, something different, something you can do with all your heart. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, Amen. and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May the soul souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. O Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May my God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to live the gospel each day. <laughs> Thanks be to God. God.